property and public transport. And Marty Morrissey attends the opening night of the musical about Susan Boyle's life, I Dreamed a Dream. number is 1850-715-900. You can email mooney at rte.ie or send a text message right now about anything at all to 51551. And a very good afternoon to you. God, listening to that audition clip there of Susan Boyle when she appeared on Britain's Got Talent. Could you believe it? That was actually 2009. What are we in now? 2012. Well, Where has the time gone, Marty Morrissey? Where has it know, gone? Somebody would want to put a break on life. It's just going way too fast for us. Would you like right? to hear it again? I'd love to hear it. This is the audition. This is the moment Susan Boyle walked onto the stage of Britain's Got Talent and became famous, not just in Britain and Ireland, but worldwide on the WWW. I dreamed a dream in time gone by to hear that through uh, to its end because you have to hand it to her it was that voice that really captured the imaginations the hearts of everybody who saw it because if I remember distinctly she came onto the stage Simon was oh yeah, who's this one now look at the stage for a kind of attitude uh, kind of the pen up to his mouth and I uh, couldn't believe it and he didn't want to sit through any more of this crap let's face it that's the impression he was giving remember that Absolutely. Marty Absolutely. and then she started singing and then all of a sudden <gasps> yeah the ears pricked up and everything else and he could see ching ching all the kind of dollar signs <laughs> but anyway Susan Boyle was on the programme about two months ago or thereabouts and she was here with Elaine C. Smith because a musical about Susan's life uh, was about to take to the stage it's called I Dreamed a Dream when she was here I asked her about being bullied in school okay. why were you bullied? because this hobby is different mm. Mm. I was on special tablets to control my hyperactivity so kids that age do not understand and they just say anything to you and then I could also scream quite a lot as well. <laughs> they thought, oh baby, I've got somebody here I can get going for, mm. oh, you know? <laughs> so and I heard they had a, a nickname for you, which was a, a terrible nickname, I thought. Well, I had a couple of nicknames. Uh, okay, maybe Simple Susan or something like that, but uh, I don't want to get any names here because they can't haunt me. They can't haunt me anymore now. And uh, they've, they've just grown up and they've had a bit more sense, I think. You know? did, did you have friends in school? Did you have close friends? I tended to be okay in primary school because my, I had a sister who was a teacher. Yeah. But uh, when, I was in, when I was in secondary school, I tended to be a wee bit isolated. I went about myself quite a lot, you know. But I think it's just because I was a normal adolescent, <laughs> you know. So she didn't have the easiest of times in school. Uh, she also told me that when she was born, she was deprived of oxygen. And the uh, person who delivered the doctor or the consultant said to her parents not to expect much from Susan because they weren't going to get much. And despite all of that, at the age... Of 47, I think she was, was she, when she appeared on the stage of Britain's Got Talent? Her whole life turned around, and we know the rest is, as they say, history. Anyway, the musical, 
opened last night at the Grand Canal Theatre and we thought, who better to send than our own <laughs> Marty Morrissey. Now, Marty, I can't remember why we thought you'd be the best person. <laughs> I don't, I can't that, even, I don't any even remember myself. In any disrespect for why. But were you aware of uh, Susan Boyle before this? Presumably you were like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably a good uh, place to start, Derek, from my perspective because I, I knew of Susan uh, by watching her on TV and said, wow, what a, what a voice. And I was aware of the YouTube and I was aware of the Twitter reaction and the the, the number of uh, the amount of interest that was in her mm. but I never uh, really said to myself this lady is going to make a huge impact I thought she was going to be a one night sensation she'd be gone and I suppose we're brought up uh, now that we work ourselves in the media where image and youthfulness and sex appeal and the way you dress and the way you look are all important ingredients and uh, initially it certainly looked as if Susan Boyle didn't take any of those boxes no, she didn't let's face it no so uh, it was so I went last night um, not quite uh, expecting anything neutral perspective. Mm. I was more probably concerned uh, from our point of view in terms of where we work and, and what we do about the production values and see how were they going to do this because it was an interesting project to say the least. Uh, and so I, I can honestly say I went in okay I can leave or take Susan Boyle. I was uh, uninhibited or untinged by what had happened in the past. But what, what a change. What a change. Well uh, tell me what is it like? I mean is, is she on stage for the entire no. hour and a half of what, whatever it is? No. They, this, Derek when I go on holidays and I, I, I like to spend a little bit of time in New York or go to London or whatever I spend a lot of time going to theatre and going to Broadway. I just love shows. So I was expecting you know okay this came from England and I thought alright we'll, we'll see what it's like. But never quite expected uh, what what I saw. If I can describe, first of all, yes. uh, the imagination, creativity and sheer raw talent that was on the Borgash uh, Grand Canal Theatre stage last night. And I, I'll start, if you don't mind, with the set, because I think you've got to picture this in your mind. Um, when the show opened, th there were various characters in the darkness on uh, basically um, boxes, mm -hmm. right? Now... I could see th through the darkness uh, there was lots of what I thought were television monitors packed up high from ground level all the way to ceiling. There must have been about 80 to 100 television monitors. The front there was uh, a little house, a uh, very small house, a little model of a house with that being lit up. And then in the middle of it when the lights came on Susan was there i.e. Elaine C. Smith who's playing, who's playing the, part the part of, of Susan, Susan Boyle. Boyle. Okay, yeah. And she d starts to describe um her life, from being a baby, being uh, diagnosed when she was born on April 1st, uh, that, you know, because of the depth, uh, the lack of oxygen, that she would never really achieve anything, mm -hmm. doctor uh, told to her parents. But the father said, Do you know what, she'll be fine, because we have a house of love, and we'll love her, and we'll mind her, and we'll bring her along. And never quite expecting, again, the talents that were now in their arms. So they went home, and uh, we moved on. As, as, the, as the stage musical moved on, we moved for various stages in her life. And the television monitors began to light up in various things. And through technology that I don't understand Derek they were able to paint pictures for instance um, they, they were talking for, uh, when her dad was dying mm -hmm. and the mother and, the, and Susan were on the stage and they were describing she was trying to tell her mom look your dad is not going to really survive much longer but on the television monitors it was like an artist's paintbrush they were able to paint and see the church the church setting and the church background, the church windows, painting across the various monitors. So not alone did you have the acting, but it was coupled with an intriguing set design that kept evolving and changing as the story changed. If it was a school environment, if she was in school, you had a school background. You know what I mean? So it was very clever. I have never quite seen anything like it. Sounds quite surreal, actually. It, it is. And it, like I went in, when I saw the set first, I said, mm, I'm not too sure this is going to work. But then, by the time the break came, I said, wow, this is really impressive. So now you, you had a marriage of a set design that was imaginative, different, using television monitors, and it would come up every now and then, different uh, pictures, but painted on. You'd see it going on, you'd say, oh yeah, the set has now changed. So you're coupling the words, you're, you're, you're focusing on what the actors are doing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's linked to what the set is changing and evolving as the stories change. And to, like the way they tell us about, uh, Susan tells us about a story, a fairy tale of being a baby and she'd click her fingers and the set would change. And so would the monitors behind. And all that would change physically, the only movement of actors was when they would ch change the, 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 
the, the boxes that they would that they were on initially. So it was very. Did clever. she change? No. I mean, are you looking at the same person? I mean, are you seeing the years as she ages up no. to now, or is she as she is now looking back? Looking back. I mean, but obviously. But they're, the, the, they're not bringing in people playing the baby and no, the bed. No, not at all. Or, or the father is, dying and the no, no, none of that kind no. of stuff. Elaine plays every part. The only does it not. So how many people change. are on stage then at that stage? I'd say there's about nine or ten. Oh, okay. I'd say, but she's not standing there on her own like not no. like a monologue no. and the graphics doing the rest. No, no. The, 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 the main characters would be her mom and her dad, her friend uh, Lorraine, the doctor plays a part, her te- the teacher plays a part. We get a scene about bullying. Um, very, very different aspects of her life until we come, of course, to uh, the Britain Got Talent, which is mainly in part two. Right. But the, the her, her life story comes in part one, from so being a baby a in hospital. Up. There's a huge Beginning, build up. middle and end. I yeah. mean, there are, is it happy at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, there are some really uh, uh, funny lines. Like, when she was being bullied in school, and, it, it, like, the, the scene starts, if I can keep mentioning about the monitors yeah. changing and painting. So we, we get a picture of a school uh, being uh, evolving and changing as they're acting on stage. And we have a teacher coming out. She says, I always, she was a music teacher. And behind were a couple of students, my acting the, the maggot. And she says, my problem with, with, with teaching uh, music is that nobody actually wants to sing or can sing. But then along comes Susan Boyle. And Susan Boyle sting, uh, sings and stops the class. But then she suffers from bullying. And the bullying impact is quite dramatic because they keep using this thump on the, uh, every now and then when she says, you know, leave me alone. So she went through a lot of mental uh, torture in the sense of the bullying aspect because you'd hear the thump which was the, uh, quite a dramatic effect, which was used continuously throughout the storyboard. But anyway, I, let me go back to the to the stage where, by she was bullied, uh, and they were all they, were, they had her on the ground, and she was like a, a baby on the ground. Mm-hmm. And this guy, John, became her hero, and he came along and he told the bully to get lost. That he was going to report him to the superior. So John, he, she had, she never met John then for years until she was at a dance. And the, the dance move, the choreography here was quite simply superb, as was the sound. Because what they did, Derek, was while they would be singing and, and dancing, they would also mix the music so that the, the narrator, in this case, or the storyteller, Susan Boyle, i.e. Elaine C. Smith, was able to come over the sound of the singing and dancing. While it, it, while it was full volume initially, it faded beautifully. So you now could hear the music but you could also hear the story okay. and she said that she hadn't met John in many many years after they left school and so suddenly there were a dance scene and they were dancing to music and there was it was a waltz and there were room moving around the choreography was magnificent and then they kind of more or less bumped into each other in the middle of the dance and uh, John says how are you Susan and they had a little chat and he asked her to dance and she says who who with and she says uh, with with me and she you with me and you know it was quite funny so they develop a, a friendship which turned into a relationship and we have another funny scene where they telephone each other and it's kind of uh, okay I, I, we might go somewhere tomorrow whatever it was and okay you hang up no 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 you hang up John no you hang up Susan you know one of those funny yes, puppy love friend every affairs. night <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, it, it gets some great laughs so it's, it's a story not all about sadness why it is, it is there and it is part of Susan's life to the great credit of the producers they didn't actually ignore it so you get the sadness, you get the hardship. She lost her dad, which yeah. was an amazing piece of acting that I saw, and lighting and sound put together. Uh, and the, 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 the father's uh, role in this was quite significant uh, because it was just, he, he came and he touched their, both of their shoulders and then he walked up, there were steps, there was always uh, steps of stairs, and he walked into the light, passing into the next life. So it was very moving at times. And uh, she had a huge love of her dad in particular. And she mentioned continuously that all she ever wanted to do was to sing. But she wanted to stop a room like her dad. And at the First Holy Communion, there was lots of singing and there was all sorts of uh, crack going on the stage. And then the father would be asked to sing and he would stop, uh, stop a room. He sang uh, Scarlet Ribbons and it was, you'd want to be made of stone, Derek, can I say this? And I know this is a musical and it's a play, but you want to be made of stone not to be touched by that particular act on stage. Well, that's a lovely song anyway. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. That, I'm, I'm just kind of mulling it over in my brain there at the moment. It's kind mm. of... It makes you think that kind of song doesn't does. make you think so. It I does. could imagine that bringing yeah. everything to a oh, complete yeah, standstill and the whole place moving. going very quiet and yeah. silent at that yeah. stage. Yeah. It sounds wonderful, Marty, I have Mar- to say. It sounds fantastic. You know, Marty, first of all, it sounds like you were moved by mm. the whole show. 
I mean, I, I was, to be honest with you, because as I say, uh, when uh, your show and uh, Ask Me Angus, I rang to know would I go to this, I said I'd be delighted um, because I love going to theatre, but I'm not moved to the extent most shows I go to like this one. Mm. And I wasn't a fan of uh, Susan Boyle, so this mm. wasn't a big thing for me. Mm. But by the time the break came, I absolutely loved Susan Boyle. I loved what she has done. Mm. And what she has achieved, like she's had a lot of hardship. And to do what she did and to achieve since at 47 years of age mm. is mm. heroic. Now, she wouldn't think that she's a hero because she, she did it because of only one thing, her love of singing. Yeah, she's very shy. That was the impression I got when she was mm. in here. You know, mm. doesn't particularly like the glamorous, the public profile side of it. But she is doing what she wanted to do, which is to sing, which is the important thing. Did you and get I, to meet her, by the way? No, I, I didn't actually. Uh, but I did. Uh, we after the show, when the show was over, we got the reaction of uh, various people, the audience members, and we also got a chance to have a word with Elaine C. Smith. Smith. Well, we'll have listen to that in a moment. Does she appear on stage herself? Because when she was here again, I said, "Will you be in this show?" And it was kind of mm, 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 there might be a cameo appearance. Yeah. Do we get to see her? Well, you know, Elaine C. Smith, who co-wrote this, she said, "You know, in most stories, uh, you have a, a, a beginning and you have a middle, but there is still no end to Susan Boyle's story." I mean, the statistics of her achievements in terms of YouTube and uh, all the various hits and biggest platinum-selling albums, all that sort of thing, is just phenomenal. Mm. So, but there was an ending I felt last night to the story. Story because matching the choreography, uh, the music, and I must mention Ed, uh, the young director, because I think she, he has to be given Ed Curtis. He's only th Curtis. He's only thirty-one, I believe, Derek. But his imagination and creativity uh, shone through here last night, as well as the acting of Elaine C. Smith. So my ending, uh, as I saw it, was when the when the show finished, uh, there was a standing ovation. The curtain went down. And there was a lot of people beside me and they were packing their bags and they were going up. And then there was just silence. And then a voice came and said, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Susan Boyle. <gasps> up went the curtain, right? And then there was a second kind of a see-through, transparent kind of a curtain uh, underneath that. And there she was, standing ovation immediately. She was dressed in a beautiful green dress. She was like Queen Elizabeth, actually, when she arrived in Ireland, if I could compare her to that. But there was that aura about her. Because Elaine C. Smith, I think she said it to you, Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, that if she was doing her job properly, that immediately that Susan Boyle would appear, she would get a standing ovation. Oh, yeah. She got four of them last night. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. She, dra she sang I Dreamed a Dream. Now, Elaine Smith, I have to say as an actor, an actress, not that I've never done it, but I've, I admire the people who do these things. I just love the whole scene to be able to do it. It's actually hard on her because she has performed magnificently on stage all night. She's carried the show. And she's a beautiful singer as well. And next thing, Susan Boyle sings. And, and say, gets the standing of wow. <laughs> Four of you them. You know, I mean, just <laughs> yeah. No, phenomenal. I know what you mean. I mean, uh, 10 out of 10 to Elaine uh, C. Smith for her acting ability and her singing ability. And then Susan comes along and you have to be touched by the whole thing because oh, yeah. suddenly she's there. You know that you've, you've known that she was deprived of oxygen at birth. You know she was bullied at school. You know how difficult her life has been. She's now 47. Um, it, her, she had let herself go since her dad had died. Uh, and now suddenly she was launched into, into fame and had suffered, found it hard to deal with because mm. she's naturally shy, as you say, Derek. And then she has blossomed in, in recent times again because her recording uh, performances which, gave, which got her away from performing in front of everybody else was a, a stroke of genius in some ways logical but a stroke of genius in the sense that it got her into a recording studio and she could sing and people have responded What won her over or what won me over to Susan Boyle really was Wild Horses apart from mm. seeing her that night on the Britain's Got Talent and being uh, taken uh, taken by the, the actual story itself and her coming on and then winning them around. But actually when I heard Wild Horses, mm. I thought that was just the most wonderful version. Anyway, we've got to do Mooney's Money on that break and then we'll hear how you get on talking to some of the cast okay. and some of the people to get their opinions, not just Marty's opinion, of people who were there last night. But the Susan Boyle musical, I Dreamed a Dream, which is running at the Bord Gosh Energy Theatre in the Grand Canal. Uh, from last night it opened, Marty was there mm. on our behalf, but it's only running until Saturday. Saturday. 
Yeah, that seems like a very short run. I, I think there'll be a demand. You know, if, well, like there will be after today. Yeah. Are they paying you? <laughs> Do you get paid for coming in and giving? A good... No, not at is all. Is there anything bad at all about it? No, the only thing I would say a negative about it, which is a positive, is that part two was so short. Well, because that's I, always I, the way. I was with, looking with forward things. to more. Second half is always shorter. Yeah. I find sometimes when you go to the theatre that the first half you don't really care about it. You know, you think we just mm. ever end till we get to the good bit. I want to see yeah. what happened when she went. Oh, Britain's yeah. got yeah. talent. That's the bit. Of, yeah. And so you have to get all that background. It, yeah. Building you up, building you up, building you up, giving you the backstory, and then, bling! Yeah. So, did you get the Britain's Got Talent? We bit? did, and that's where the television monitors also played a role because in the beginning of part two, it is one of the. Do you know how you go to something even as a child and you remember it forever and ever more? Now, I'm far from being a child, but last night, the beginning of part two will will linger long in my memory because we're trans, transferred to Glasgow to an audition. And she arrives with the kind of the handbag and the, 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 the coat and they're uh, announcing the various acts that are coming along. And we have, on the seat, we have a clown. We have kind of three uh, Elvis Presley impersonations. We have loads of <laughs> acts, right? And there's Susan in the middle of it. And what happens... And the interconnection between them is very, very funny. And then one guy at the end starts playing a guitar and then another guy is beating the, beating the drums and suddenly we have a song going. And yeah. it is the choreography of this to me was just... I laughed, I almost cried, which I didn't, but I, I laughed and I said... Now, that's a piece of pure theatre. Mm. It was just magical. And it was always, we kept going back to this clicking the fingers and changing the scene. But that, to me, was just a personal moment as well as the, the moment, the sad moment when, his, uh, when her father died. But that, to me, was one of the, the highlights. But it's all, we're just saying there in the break, uh, Brenda and yourself and myself, about the connection. And Susan Boyle, to me, connected, not alone her story, but herself when she came on the stage. She just she, she just connects with the audience yeah. because not all of us are perfect and in the world well. we, we live in it's not all about <laughs> <laughs> Martin no, I, no what I was saying was when she came out in that Britain's Got Talent audition and she did that scene that millions of people have seen on YouTube and she blew everybody away what was so refreshing was Simon Cowell has a very packaged idea of what a pop star yeah. is and how beautiful a pop star has to look. And mm. there are certain ways you have to conform mm. in terms of how you looked. And she walked out and her hair wasn't done. Yeah. Her eyebrows could have been waxed a little bit more, so, so to speak. Oh, she, she didn't like look mother. like... Yeah, a lot. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? She didn't... So she didn't her beauty and her talent came yeah. from deep down, yeah. right inside, and that radiated and it blew any idea of, you know, that of a pop star and what it should look like and what Simon Cowell thinks a pop star should look like out of the water and it touched people but that particular moment we, we'll have a listen to people's reactions but we've got way up to probably 45 mm. or thereabouts so uh, just in case you're curious about that but anyway you caught some reaction from other people there last night yeah we did indeed and I think everybody left you know we're in a recession we all know about it uh, but last night if, if the people who were there, 2,000 of us, I think, were there, packed into what is a lovely, beautiful theatre for, for mm -hmm. these kind of productions and well done to everybody there. Um, but everybody left with uh, a happier beat in their heart. They had to, no matter what uh, way they were feeling going in, they left a lot happier. And last night, after the show, not only did we speak to Elaine C. Smith, but we also spoke to several members of the audience. Very good. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Goosebumps. Wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. And far more than we, well, we didn't know what to expect. That's it, yeah, it was brilliant. And just uh, wonderful to get her life story. And the, the, whole life. the real thrill was she oh, came out. And what a voice. Powerful, strong, and passionate. Shivers, shivers. I thought it was absolutely magnificent. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I especially enjoyed Susan at the end. Excellent, wonderful, and <laughs> joyful night. It was lovely at the end. It was a surprise when she came on because I'd heard she would make a guest appearance, but then it looked like it was over and oh, it's not going to happen. It was still fantastic. And then she comes out, oh my God, it's overwhelming. You know, we can all do My mom came, she's 85 years of age. Very good, very good. Well, I love her singing and Andy Case, like, you know. Absolutely fantastic. It was beautiful, it was very nice. I loved it. Fabulous, <laughs> absolutely, thoroughly enjoyed it. Can I first of all ask you about your reaction to tonight's show? I know it's your first time performing in Dublin. It is, and, and it's a bit of a, I've had a dream tonight, really. You know, I always had, although I've been here lots of times on holiday and I've never got the chance to perform, so what a reaction, you know, to come out. And because a lot of a lot of my family are, are from this part of the world as well, there's uh, there's just something wonderful about that. My, my great-great-uncle 
uh, in my grandfather's side was uh, Count John McCormack. That, mm. uh, so, so that I was brought up listening wow. to that, and to suddenly come out. So I'm actually quite emotional, quite tearful of it tonight. Tell me about your your relationship with Susan herself, because you co-wrote this, which is yeah. a phenomenal achievement when you see what what we saw tonight. Well, um, I just felt after I'd met Susan, it was actually the whole opening I wrote after I was at our 50th birthday party, and I came home that night. I woke at four in the morning and got up and I wrote the whole opening with Joys and the Child, everything, and sent it to the producer and I said, whoever we get to write this, it's got to be magical. I kept thinking about the opening of Carousel where Billy Bigelow is looking down on his life and I thought, that's the way because what has happened to Susan Boyle is a fairy story. And she doesn't marry the prince, but she gets a career. And in terms of tonight, I mean, I know what you said with Derek a couple of weeks ago, you know, that your job would have been fulfilled if you get a standing ovation for Susan. But you got a standing ovation. The the, the whole show got a standing ovation, as well as Susan. That's what's been wonderful. Actually, my thing to Susan, I always say, we'll have done our job if they're on their feet before you come on. Mm. And... And when that happened the first night in Newcastle, I got really to Andy Gray, my great friend who's in it as well, he said, see, he holds my hand and goes. And and of course, I get actually very embarrassed at the stand ovation, it's classic. You know, you do all that and everything. Well, I can, and they keep saying to me, take the bow, take mm-hmm. the bow. And so I, I was standing there, I could hear Andy saying, stay, because <laughs> I just want to <laughs> run back. But uh, the, the Dublin audience got all the stuff about the tradition of singing mm-hmm. and how that matters. And and that great Irish tradition that were and and the tradition of Burns in Scotland that that song unaccompanied singing was how we entertained ourselves and and I grew up in that living room the same as Susan watching that happening and I mean I could cry I'm actually very emotional at this and indeed I think a few of us were in tears tonight and we were laughing at times yeah. and we were crying at times but for you as the performer it's a roller coaster yeah. ride it, for us is it for you yeah exhausting I, I also I just lost my dad a few months ago so. Be, oh. four weeks before we started rehearsals so all the stuff about Susan's father and everything that that resonates and echoes and you go to a dark place in yourself and, and it sounds very actory which I, you know, I, I tend to resist a lot of the time but I, I don't think I've ever ever been so tired doing it. Well enjoy it and thank you for bringing a bit of happiness to Dublin. Absolute pleasure, it's been a thrill. And a bit of business to the theatre as well, and why not? Mm-hmm. Because I know it was sold out last night. It's only running until Saturday. You've heard uh, some of the audience and their views on what they saw last night. You heard Marty's now. You make your own mind up. If you want to go along, we bring it to you. Uh, because we talked a lot about Susan Boyle all that time ago. My goodness, 2009. I find it hard to believe it's so long ago. It's extraordinary. And you know, one really other is. point, Derek, before I, I leave you. There's a live orchestra which is conducted by Kennedy Atchison. It's mm-hmm. spellbinding. We're brought back to the 70s and 80s and you have loads of really good music. Oh yeah, name know. six. Knock three times, times on the ceiling if, if you want me. me. Twice well, on the... No, no, exactly. At 17, you love that. I learned the truth at 17. We had her in here. Janice uh, yeah. Ian. She sang it. Here? I remember, yeah. I must have been out. How could I be out that day? Three or four years ago. One of my favourite songs. Daydream Believer. Believer. Yeah. And we also have uh, Something Tells Me. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen tonight. (laughs) 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 God, I'm showing my age. Yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) You've all of that as part of it. So you you have tears, you have laughter, you have live music, you've got great choreography. Certainly, it's the highest, the best recommendation. I know it's my first time doing this with you, Derek, but I have to say it's 10 out of 10 for me. Well, I, I think it, everybody should go. Every show coming into Ireland from here on out will want Marty, Marty Morrissey. Marty. To go <laughs> you, you did that so well, I'd hate to hear you if you were lashing into it and saying it was a load of nonsense. Yeah, well, I'm sure you we do have to call with, it fair and honest. With ease and grace. Now, before you go, how is um, the, the hurler? 